tonight on Y News. Malacanang assures that the suspension of deals with countries that support the Iceland resolution won't affect the country's economy. Fuel prices to go up to 2 pesos per liter after attacks on Saudi Arabia's oil plants. Senator Panfilo Lacson questions a 54 billion peso allotment for congressmen in the proposed 2020 national budget. Environmental samples in Tondo, Manila and Davao test positive for polio virus. And two workers died after a hotel in Manila City collapsed this morning. Good evening. Malacanang says the suspension of negotiations with countries that support the Iceland resolution will not impact the Philippine economy. Rosalie Cos tells us why. Malacanang admits it's President Rodrigo Duterte who ordered the suspension of all loans and agreements with countries which supported the Iceland resolution. The resolution calls on the United Nations Human Rights Council or UNHRC to investigate the Duterte administration's anti-drug war. Presidential spokesperson Salvador Panelo says the war on drugs will remain until President Duterte's term ends, emphasizing that the policy won't impact the country's economy. The official adds the Iceland resolution is an insult to the president and to the country. Among the 18 countries that support it, the UK has a 21 million euros worth of technical assistance grant for the Build, Build, Build program. Other countries or trading partners and institutions can fill this gap, he says. It will not dramatically, even slightly, I think, impact on our economy. For one, the loans and agreements that are currently in existence are being implemented, so it will not affect. Number two, out of the 18 countries involved, according to Secretary Dominguez, only UK has an offer of 21 million euros as loan, I think with respect to this uh, build and build, 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 build project the Presidente. The palace also points out the Iceland resolution has no basis as majority of Filipinos still support the government's anti-drug war. Based on the June 2019 survey of the social weather stations, 82% of the 1,200 respondents are satisfied with the Duterte administration's anti-narcotics campaign. For the respondents, a big change in the peace and order situation due to the arrest of drug suspects is at hand. These are the people who know the circumstances on the ground. These are the respondents asked by SWS. Kung talagang may problema tayo sa pag-aabuso, lalabas sa survey yun. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanya. Agriculture Secretary William Dar announced that the Department of Agriculture will impose double tariff on imported rice effective end of this month. The official said such measures is, up, is to address the increasing price of rice in markets in line with the Republic Act 8752 or Anti-Dumping Act of 1999. The law said anti-dumping duties are imposed on imports which the government determines to be priced below fair market value. At present, 93% of the country's rice is locally produced, while about 7-10% to comes from importation. Oil companies will implement a big-time oil price hike effective tomorrow. Meanwhile, the Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board, or LTFRB, will study the possible jeepney fare hike due to the big-time oil price hike. John Anno tells us why. The price of gasoline will increase by more than 2 pesos per liter, while a more than 1 peso spike in diesel and kerosene will be effective at 6 a.m. tomorrow. The DOE says this is an effect of the attacks on two big oil facilities in Saudi Arabia last week. The Land Transportation Franchising and Regulatory Board is mulling over the possible jeepney fare hike. With the adjustable fare matrix drafted by the Department of Finance, the National Economic Development Authority, the Department of Energy, and the LTFRB, a fare increase will be determined. LTFRB Chairman Martin Dalgra explains the movement in the prices of oil in the last six months will be considered as well as tomorrow's oil price adjustment. 
sa ngayon, hindi pa natin ma makikita. Dahil nga, uh, we're looking at yung pagbaba at pagtaas ng, uh, ng presyo ng krudo at presyo ng gasolina. Alam. Likely tataas, pero hindi ko pa alam kung makano. Meanwhile, Transport Group Pasang Mazda questions the basis of the big-time oil price hike. Meron tayong tinatawag na buffer stock, good for one month. At ito ay nabili nila yan doon sa lumang presyo pa. Bakit ngayon ang timano itataas nila? However, the DOE explains they only follow the weekly oil price adjustments based on the price movements in the international market. Hindi po tayo nakafocus doon sa kung saan galing yung inventory, kung saan po galing sa ang inventory, ang, ang, ang pinagkunan ng inventory. Ang focus po natin, ang consumer dapat nakaka-receive ng presyo up to the day. Yung araw na yan, kung ano ang trading price doon sa international market, yan po ang natatanggap niya. In case of a jeepney fare hike, the LTFRB will come up with a fare matrix. The price hike will be affected 10 days after publication on the papers. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Senator Panfilo Lacson questioned the 54 billion peso allocation for congressmen in the 2020 proposed national budget. The senator wants to scrutinize the budget to make sure that there is no pork barrel. Here's Grace Cassin to tell us why. The information that, uh, or report that we receive, each deputy speaker, 22 of them, will be receiving uh, an, alloc an additional allocation of 1.5 billion pesos. So easily that's 33 billion. And each congressman will be given an allocation of 700 million. This information that Senator Panfilo Lacson pointed out in detail directly came from a congressman he talked to. But according to House Committee on Ways and Means Chairman Joey Salceda, the allotment is only 100 million pesos for each congressman. Salceda adds that this is based on the needed project of their respective districts. But Senator Lacson wants to make sure if the fund is directly go to the implementing agencies and specific projects. Hindi naman dapat pare-pareho ang allocation sa district. Their districts, it should be need-based and priority-based. Lacson explained that before receiving a budget, there should be a specific project and an itemized expenditure that is required by law. Kung i-introduce pa lang nila as amendments, individual amendments, na lahat sila, bawat isa sa kanila, merong 100 million, then if it is not pork, I don't know what it is. Ano? House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano insists that the fund allocated for congressmen is not pork, insisting that those are funds for the construction of flyovers, seaports, airports, and other major highways in their districts. He adds that Senate can scrutinize the budget in the scheduled bicameral conference. I think um, uh, Congressman Salcedo was just being frank na concern pa rin ng bawat congressman na hindi ma zero or hindi maisahan yung kanyang lugar at wala masyadong pondo. Pero walang nakatagong pork. Well, kung nang itemize, eh di fine. Grace Kassin, UNTV News and Rescue, Senate of the Philippines. House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano clarifies that the 1.6 billion peso additional fund for the lower house of Congress will not be used solely for the deputy speakers. Speaker Cayetano said the amount will be utilized to enhance the capability of the lower house as well as for the salary increase of their employees. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Questions on the 1.6 billion pesos additional fund for the House of Representatives on top of its 14 billion pesos in the proposed 2020 national budget have surfaced. Several news articles allege that such additional fund will go to the eight deputy speakers in the lower chamber. House Speaker Alan Peter Caetano clarifies these are just fake news. They want to remove the focus from the fact that uh, we had a very good budget process. According to Speaker Caetano, only a fraction of the amount will be used to establish new deputy speakers. It's for uh, enhancing our capabilities of research, including the Congressional Budget and Planning Office. It's also to meet the requirements um, pag pinasa natin yung bagong uh, salary standardization law. Also included in the 1.6 billion additional budget are the funds for establishing new committees and enhancement of facilities in the House of Representatives 
to showcase the exceptional arts and representations of every region in the country. Meanwhile, around 10 billion pesos will be added as amendments to the provisions in the proposed 2020 national budget. These include the 3 billion peso additional fund for buying palay, the maintenance and other operating expenses of the Department of Education for the thorough implementation of the K-12 program, full electrification nationwide, additional budget for sports in preparation for the Para Games and Tokyo Olympics, and funds for the country's protected areas. According to Speaker Caetano, these funds will be sourced from the cancelled barangay elections and the right of way fund. Today is the last day the lawmakers may submit their individual amendments before a small committee checks and studies which amendments will be added to the proposed 2020 national budget. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, House of Representatives. The Department of Public Order and Safety or DPOS warns the public no one is exempt from the implementation of the ongoing clearing operations. Even parts of government-owned building that obstruct a public road is not spared. Aiko Miguel explains why. These pillars that belong to the Quezon City Police District or QCPD traffic sector to building in Novaliches weren't exempt from today's clearing operations of depots. The posts were not on the sidewalk when the building was built in 2017. But when a road widening project was implemented in the area, the post began to stand on the food traffic's walkway. QCPD personnel assisted in dismantling the pillars. Kailangan po natin sundin ang uh, utos ng ating uh, minamahal na Pangulo. Sa ating mga kababayan naman, dapat po uh, sumunod din po sila. Depos assures the district engineering office has checked the building. To as certain, the building remains safe even with the post removed. Kini-remove po natin from ground hanggang doon po sa roof line. Okay naman po yung structural pag-aralan na po namin, hindi naman po maapektuhan yung whole structure. So ito yung isang magandang example natin na halam, alimbawa na pwedeng pamarisan na mismong itong uh, police present natin ay tinatanggal na rin natin na obstruction. Dito lamang nagpapatunay na lahat ng mamamayan dapat sumunod. Tomorrow, Depos is set to demolish a police precinct that sits on a sidewalk in Barangay Balingasa, Quezon City. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Clearing public roads of obstructions is part of complying with President Rodrigo Duterte's order to local government units in Metro Manila. But several sidewalk vendors in Ermita, Manila complain over what they describe as inconsiderate clearing operations. Nel Maribohok explains why. Barangay Hall personnel in Ermita, Manila conducted a surprise clearing operation on Maria Orosa Street. Street vendors had no other choice but to let authorities confiscate their pushcarts and other equipment. But the barangay personnel left their items and goods. Miranda is one of the vendors affected by the clearing operations. She just grabbed her personal belongings and some other items while the barangay personnel grabbed her cart. When she saw her cart dump into a truck, Miranda could not help but express her emotions. Her items and goods were left lying on the sidewalk. Miranda and her fellow sidewalk vendors now have to find another way to earn a living. But their question now is how? Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Welcome back to Why News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro III left off. I'm Alex Baltazar and here are the headlines. Environmental samples in Tondo, Manila City, and Davao test positive for poliovirus. An animal protection group calls for stricter government procedure on culling hogs. The Department of Justice orders the National Bureau of Investigation to probe the death of PMA Cadet Fort Class Darwin Dormitorio. 
and find out the alternative modes of transportation in Italy that the Philippines can adopt to deal with the monster traffic. Good evening. Two persons have been confirmed dead after an old hotel building that was being demolished collapsed. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno de Magoso has ordered to stop the operations and the demolition of this branch of the hotel until its safety is assessed by the city government. Arlene Delgado tells us why. It took almost six hours before the remains of Melo Ison, one of the helpers of the Fabellion construction, were retrieved. He was one of the two persons who tragically died after an old building of Hotel Sogo Mabini Branch in Malate, Manila, collapsed this morning. According to an eyewitness, the middle part of the building was the first to collapse at around 9.30 in the morning. Ano pa yan, may mga poste pa yan, ano yan, dinidemolis na yan. Lahat kompleto poste niyan. Tsaka yung mga bakal na flooring, meron pa yan, mga bakal. Kasi yung ginagawa nila sa bakal, ina-acetyl nila para matanggal yung mga bakal. Melo's cousin Edson survived after jumping off the collapsing building. According to Manila Police District Chief Vicente Danao Jr., one of the challenges in the operations was the lack of equipment and the vulnerability of the structure. The remains of Jerome Fabello, the second fatality, was retrieved at 5.45 this afternoon. Fabello was a skilled worker. Mayor Isco Moreno Domagoso has extended his sympathies to the victims' families. The local chief executive vows to immediately start the investigation on the incident once the retrieval operations conclude. The probe will look into the possible negligence of the contractor and the hotel management. I will task the city engineering uh, to find out if there is fault. For the meantime, we don't want to accuse anybody. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Manila. The Department of Health confirms two environmental samples in Manila City and Davao are polio positive. My Bermudas will tell us why. Samples from the sewage systems or waterways in Tondo, Manila and Davao City have been declared positive for polio. Health Undersecretary Eric Domingo says the virus found is not a new strain. It has been identified as vaccine-derived polio type 2 or VDP2 virus. The health official adds the virus has a few mutations. However, yung vaccine na derived na polio, kapag continuous siya nagsisirculate, nakakain, naidudume, nakakain, nadudume, Every year, merong small percentage ng mutation dun sa vaccine-derived polio virus na parang less than 1% per year. The DOH says even if there are only two cases in humans in the Philippines and two environmental samples have been confirmed positive, parents should see this as a cause of concern as the polyvirus may be transmitted through fecal transmission. The agency advises to clean the environment and be extra cautious to avoid contracting the disease. Oral fecal route ang infection ng polio. Makakain mo lang siya, ma-infect ang isang tao kung yung dumi na infected maari mapunta sa water, for example, or sa food, at ma-ingest siya ng mga bata. DOH reminds parents to check the immunization status of their child as children 5 years old and below are at a higher risk or has the highest chance to contract polio. Washing hands with soap and water is a simple yet important measure to prevent contracting the disease. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. An animal protection group calls on the government to implement stricter measures when calling hogs in areas with cases of African swine fever. Ray Pelayo reports why. This was how hogs in Barangay Kupang Antipola were buried within the one-kilometer radius from the ASF-infected area in August. It can be noticed that Baco operator wore no protective gear, while hogs thrown into the pit were still alive. The World Animal Protection condemns this way of culling because of the possibilities the disease could be spread. The group calls on the proper implementation of the international guidelines and safeguard of culling. Kung merong fluids na lumalabas dun sa baboy or dugo, any vehicle that will run over uh, the, the fluids or the mud will be now a vector for transmission. They say the government should be transparent on the information needed by the public. Kasi kung hindi sigurado yung mga tao, they might have been trying to sell the meat, process the meat, transport the meat, hide the pigs, 
throw away the pigs. While all of that is happening, then there's active transmission. The Department of Agriculture announced that ASF killed hogs in Bulacan and Rizal last September 9 after it was confirmed through a laboratory test in Europe on samples taken from the dead hogs. Means that when there is no information, panic actually is the natural reaction. Hindi lang po tao, pati gamit, pati kutsilyo, mga ginamit, pati yung syringes, kung ginamit, pati yung mga sasakyan. Kung meron dugo, meron fluids dun sa lupa at meron putex na dinaanan. According to the group, it took 20 to 25 years for the first countries affected by the disease to eradicate it like Lithuania and Belgium. Kailangan po ng appropriate disinfecting uh, procedures. There should be uh, at least 30 minutes contact with the disinfectant para mamatay po yung virus. Meanwhile, Quezon City Mayor Joy Belbonte says around 400 hogs have already been called in Barangay Payatas due to ASF virus infection. The number might reach 700 including those called in Barangay Bagong Silangan. Ray Pilayo, UNTV, Use and Rescue, Quezon City. Around 500 hogs have been called in 14 barangays in the municipality of Giginto, Bulacan. Calling operations in neighboring towns may also be launched. Nestor Torres reports why. Bulacan Governor Daniel Fernando ordered last Saturday to call all pigs in Giginto and nearby municipalities amid the African swine fever outbreak. This, according to Eduardo Se, Giginto's municipal veterinary officer. Ang suggestion niya ay patayin na lahat yung baboy sa specifically region ka, district 2, yung mga bakit lang mga uh, farm ang ano nila ang directive ay mga blood sample pag negative yung ano clearance kung gusto nyo magbenta o magbabas pero pag positive i-comment in Giginto alone 2,000 pigs from 200 backyard hog racers are expected to be called according to the veterinary office all swines will be collected either sick or not racers will be paid 3,000 pesos from each wine. The backyard racers agree with this system, launched by the local government. Okay lang naman kasi kaysa malugi kaya parang sayang din yung gasos mo sa pagkain, sa pagod. Kung mamamatay lang, tapos hindi nila mabibili. Oh, kaya gaya ngayon, namatayan ako nung isang beek. Sayang din yun. Namamatayan ako ng tatatas yung isang buntis pa. Wala na po yung laman ng babuyan ko. Mas maganda po yung nakuha na po yung labing apat kasi mamatay lang sa sakit. Kasi namatay na ako labing dalawang baboy. Sana matulungan po kami mabalik yung puhunan. Calling operations in the nearby towns of Balagtas, Pandi, Bustos, Plaridel, Malolos, Kalumpit, Bulacan-Bulacan, Santa Maria, and Bukawe may also be launched as those are within one kilometer radius from Giginto. Nasa Torres, UNTV News and Rescue, Giginto, Bulacan. PNP Chief Police General Oscar Albayalde calls hazing a heinous crime. Those found guilty of causing the death of PMA Cadet Fort Class Darwin Dormitorio may face charges. April Sinadoza explains why. It's mar ma hazing is basically plain and simple murder. I think hazing is a heinous crime. This was the statement of Philippine National Police Chief Police General Oscar Albayalde on the proposal of Cagayan de Oro District Representative Rufus Rodriguez to include hazing on the list of heinous crimes. Hazing is banned under Republic Act No. 11053 or Anti-Hazing Act of 2018. Last Friday, authorities confirmed PMA Cadet Fort Class Darwin Dormitorio died from hazing. Hazing was never tolerated. The hazing was never tolerated, especially now that we have hazing laws. In a joint statement, the Philippine Military Academy and PNP Baguio ensure that individuals found guilty for the death of dormitorio will face charges for anti-hazing law violation. Three cadets are now considered suspects in the crime. Two others are new persons of interest, while nine are witnesses. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Secretary Salvador Panelo expressed his support to the lawmaker's proposal. 
He also calls on PMA Superintendent Lieutenant General Roni Evangelista to resign from his post. Personally, I'm suggesting that there must be a law that will make the heads, like the PMA, accountable, criminally. Tigil yan. Alam mo, pag ginawa mo criminally subject sila sa prosecution, I don't think magkakaroon pa ng hising. Kahit sa mga fraternities, gawin mo yung pinakahead, papakulong mo. Department of Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara has ordered the National Bureau of Investigation to prove the death of the hazing victim on September 18 in Baguio City. The NBI may file appropriate charges to the persons involved should they find any evidence. April Seredoza, UNTV News and Rescue. The remains of PMA cadet Darwin Dormitorio was brought back to his family in Cagayan de Oro City last Saturday night. The cadet's family hopes that Darwin is the last victim of hazing in the Philippine Military Academy. Mirasola Bugadil will tell us why. As the flag-draped casket bearing PMA cadet Darwin Dormitorio's remains was laid at the Cosmopolitan Funeral Homes, several family members poured out their sentiments. Dexter Dormitorio calls for justice for the death of his brother. Magayo lang yung kung sa imo ang suporta sa investigasyon ng unta walay cover up ng unta mahatag ang justicia ng unta dili lang ang mga kadete ang ang mga ang mga reported perpetrators sa sa ilahang core ang mahatag ng punishment. Darwin was the youngest of three children. Dexter described him as the pride and joy of their parents. Though the family is grieving, they said they have no hard feelings towards the institution. But they ask officials of the country's premier military school to let Darwin be the last victim of an old tradition of pleb initiation which claimed the 20-year-old's life. At pagpapahalaga sa buhay ng isa't isa. Kasi pumasok kayo doon with the same intention to serve and protect the country, to be future leaders. Sana talaga maging isa yun sa core values. At sana talaga ma-instill nyo yun sa heart ng mga kadete nyo. President Rodrigo Duterte signed into law the Anti-Hazing Act of 2018 or Republic Act No. 11053. The new law provides stricter penalties for hazing perpetrators and punishes those who cover up the crime. The day of interment of the remains of Cadet Dormitorio is scheduled for Wednesday, September 25th. Mirasol Abugadil, UNTV News and Rescue. In other news, Philippine National Police Chief General Oscar Albayalde reacts to the insinuation of some senators that he is one of the ninja cops who recycle illegal drugs. Meanwhile, the PNP chief says seven of the ninja cops on PDEA's list are also on the PNP's watch list. Rosalie Cos tells us why. In a press conference in the Senate last week, Senator Richard Gordon showed a number four on his finger when he was asked by a reporter about the rank of the high-ranking police officer allegedly involved in the recycling of illegal drugs. And in a press conference in Camp Crame this morning, PNP Chief Police General Oscar Albayalde was asked about the issue. And this was his reply. Uh, let us not make a mistake na well, just for the perception of one person or uh, some persons, eh, we will base uh, yung ating mga accusations. Excuse me? Based on... <coughs> Excuse me. Based on perception alone. But the National Police Commission or NAPOLCOM stated the case the PNP chief was involved in when his men were caught recycling illegal drugs in August 13 in Pampanga had already been dismissed. The involvement, I think, of this uh, ninja cops has been uh, well explained at the time when uh, General uh, Albaya Alde was the provincial director of uh, uh, the province of Pampanga when this incident cropped up, but the necessary uh, personal action has been made when he was relieved administratively and those uh, who were found to be criminally liable were charged in court. 
they were uh, uh, subjected to preliminary investigation, less, of course, the name of uh, General Alpayalde, that those who were charged were cleared also of uh, the charges. General Albayalde called the statements of some senators recycling of issues, pointing out that his case had already been dismissed. No, there are insinuations. These are all recycled. No? Kung uso kasi yung recycler siguro sa, sa ano, recycling sa droga, baka uso din yung recycling ng mga personal uh, uh, perception. No? This, as I've said, these are all personal perception. Uh, just to be fair to everyone, kung sino man ang sinasabi, kailangan naman sabihin, no? hindi yung insinuation na ganun. Kasi it's really very hard when you're doing everything already and yet you're being accused of something na hindi mo naman na nagawa and hindi mo naman nang, at hindi nangyari. Meanwhile, the PNP chief confirms the seven ninja cops on the Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency's list are among the 22 policemen on their watch list of those in recycling illegal drugs. Of the 87 policemen on their list, 77 are accounted. 17 of them are still active in service. 4 a wall. 31 retired. 16 dismissed. 1 suspended. 4 separated. And 2 have no record. Of the 22 on their watch list, 3 are police commissioned officers, with police major is the highest rank. And 19 are non commissioned officers. Meron kaming IMEG dito. This is the very reason kung bakit tayo nagtayo ng uh, integrity monitoring enforcement group. No, to monitor these uh, people. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. Classes in some schools and work in government offices were dismissed early today in celebration of the 27th National Family Week. This is pursuant to the announcement number 53 series of 2019 of the Civil Service Commission, which encourages government agencies and state-run universities and colleges to shorten work and class hours until 2 p.m. so they can spend meal time with their families. This is in line with the National Family Week being celebrated every last week of September. Malacanang earlier announced that work in government offices in the executive branch will be suspended on Monday beginning 3 p.m. onwards. The Department of Education or DepEd also announced that work and classes in all DepEd offices in public schools will be suspended effective 3 p.m. Malacanang PSC Kamao defeats Judiciary Matches while defending champs AFP Cavaliers records their second win in a row. Meanwhile, rookie team DA Food Masters enters the win column on the third game day of UNTV Cup Season 8. Bernard Dadis tells us why. There's a good by In the main game of Sunday's triple header, jersey number 21, Eric De La Cuesta, and jersey number 9, Ian Garrido, led Malacanang PSC Camoo towards a 64-60 win against two-time champion Judiciary Magis at the Basic City Sports Center. The two made combined 26 points. Narayan does have your steal from Chester Tolomia and a pass to Garrido who converted a two-point shot with only one minute and nine seconds left on the game clock was also a huge contribution to Kamao's victorious campaign. According to coach Rapi Gonzalez, their defensive plays from the start was the key to the win. Sinabi ko, tsagayin lang, huwag namin madaliin. We need to play defense. Dahan-dahan lang para makuha natin itong game na to. While the combined 39 points of judiciaries Chester Tolomia and Don Camaso were not enough to stop Malacanang PSC's rally. Uh, naging laps namin nung nag-trap sila eh. Medyo na wala yung point guard namin. Nag, uh, nagkaroon ng mga maraming error kaya kami nahabol. Siguro sa susunod na game ay yun ang pag-aaralan namin. Maganda yung nilaro namin eh. Doon lang kami medyo nagka-problema. In the second game, Phil Health failed to counter defending champ AFP Cavaliers plays during the hardcourt battle that ended at 91-80. And in the DA Ombudsman face-off, the Food Masters toppled the Grop Busters neck and neck and finished the game with a 5-point lead, 78-73. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Philippines. And to complete the most significant news for this day, Y News continues. Here are the top stories. Three Filipino semiconductor companies join over 700 firms from across 43 countries in the largest microelectronics event in Taiwan. 
Vanessa Salud reports. Pinoy Semicon Companies Integrated Microelectronics Incorporated or IMI, Nanotronics Incorporated and Sinex Design Consultancy and Services Incorporated showcase Philippine-made products, equipment, and innovative ideas to the global market during Semicon Taiwan 2019 that ran from September 18 to 20 at Taipei Nankang Exhibition Center in Taiwan. The Philippines seems uh, to be uh, at the, the right path in terms of supporting the, the, the whole market in terms of alternative solutions or alternative sources uh, aside from Taiwan and China. Michael Alfred Ignacio, Director of Commercial Affairs at the Philippine Trade and Investment Center Taipei, said that the Philippines is almost at the level of Taiwan's export rate when it comes to semiconductors and electronics. We are here with the Philippine Pavilion at Semicon because um, like Taiwan, no? hindi alam ng marami, pero 50, almost 54% of all our exports are electronics and semiconductors. Pareho rin sa Taiwan. 54% of everything that they export, yung mga produkto na binibenta nila sa labas, um, sa electronics and semiconductors then Of course, malaki yung Taiwan kasi world leader sila. But we also want to, to partner with them and catch up and also build alliances no? to, and give value to each other para mas tumaas pareho. Aside from these products, Ignacio believes that the Philippines is a part when it comes to skills, labor quality, and the Filipinos' dedication and level of English. The Philippine delegation noted that improvements in trade of semiconductors will also lift the country's other industries like paper and plastic. We want actually to help our bioplastic manufacturer in the Philippines not just to produce the bioplastic for biodegradable but also to increase their product. So we can add it to bioplastic but also to paper. Semicon 2019, which attracted over 50,000 visitors, is a collaboration of Semicon industry giants, government agencies, and research institutions that aims to strengthen the Semicon industry worldwide. Vanessa Salud, UNTV News and Rescue, Taiwan. And for the news abroad, Thomas Cook, the world's oldest travel firm, collapsed on Monday, stranding hundreds of thousands of holidaymakers around the globe and sparking the largest peacetime repatriation effort in British history. Jovic Burmas reports. Thomas Cook has collapsed after last-minute negotiations aimed at saving the 178-year-old holiday firm failed. The UK Civil Aviation Authority said the tour operator has ceased trading with immediate effect. It has also triggered the biggest ever peacetime repatriation aimed at bringing more than 150,000 British holidaymakers home. If uh, customers, passengers have a flight booked out from the UK today, uh, unfortunately your flight has been cancelled. Uh, so please don't go to the uh, please don't go to the the airport. Um, if you're overseas on a Thomas Cook uh, holiday, uh, then you can continue to enjoy your holiday. The CAA is launching a, a repatriation. Uh, this is the largest repatriation uh, since the Second World War, and we will be bringing home everybody um, back back to the UK as close as possible to their return date. Peter Fang Hauser, Thomas Cook's chief executive, said the firm's collapse was a matter of profound regret, commenting as the company entered compulsory liquidation. Mr. Fang Hauser also apologized to the firm's millions of customers and thousands of employees. The tour operator's failure puts 20,000 jobs at risk worldwide, including 9,000 in the UK. Transport Secretary Grant Shapps said the company's collapse was very sad news for staff and holiday makers. He urged holidaymakers to be understanding with staff amid the enormous task of bringing people home. Mr. Sheps has announced that the government and CAA has hired dozens of charter planes to fly customers home free of charge. The emergency operation, codenamed Operation Matterhorn, is aiming to bring home Britons currently on holiday with the firm. On Sunday, empty aircraft had already started to be flown overseas, ready to bring British tourists back to the UK on Monday. Jovic Burmas, UNTV News and Rescue, London, United Kingdom.
U.S. President Donald Trump and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi exchanged warm words of friendship in Texas at a rare mass rally for a foreign leader. Mirasol Abugudil has the details. Tens of thousands of Indian Americans packed into a Houston stadium Sunday for a rally with Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, joined by U.S. President Donald Trump in a rare mass show of support for a foreign leader on U.S. soil. The event gives Modi, a nationalist facing international criticism over a recent crackdown in disputed Kashmir, a chance to energize his relationship with Indian Americans who are active political supporters. When I met him for the first time, he said to me, India has a true friend in White House. We're looking forward to concluding several new defense deals very soon. There are a lot of them in the works. Here in America, we're creating the United States Space Force, and we're working closely with India to enhance space cooperation. Houston is a rare Democratic stronghold in Republican-dominated Texas and serves as the economic anchor of a state that will be critical to Trump's 2020 re-election bid. Polls showed tepid support by Indian American voters, some 75 percent of whom voted for his Democratic rival Hillary Clinton in 2016. It will not be the first time Modi, who heads the Hindu nationalist Bharatiya Janata Party, has addressed a large crowd in the United States, which is home to about 4 million Indian Americans, including about 300,000 in Houston and nearby Dallas, according to a Pew Research Center analysis of U.S. Census data. Some 19,000 people turned out for a similar event in New York in 2014, and Indian American volunteers living in U.S. suburbs helped run a telephone blitz of voters in India in the run-up to his May re-election campaign. Modi's visit to Houston comes ahead of this week's UN General Assembly in New York and amid a particularly tense time on the subcontinent. The Indian leader further strained long-simmering relations with Pakistan last month by revoking the partial autonomy enjoyed by Muslim-majority Kashmir, which both nuclear-armed countries claim. Modi's move has been met by international criticism. Mirasol Abogadil, UNTV, News and Rescue. Heidi Lindias bagged two bronze medals at the 2019 International Weightlifting Federation World Championships in Pattaya, Thailand on Friday. Diaz completed for the 55-kilogram category. She won her first bronze after lifting 121 kilograms in clean and jerk discipline. She lifted 93 kilograms in the snatch category, ranking in 8th place and lifting a total of 214 kilograms. Meanwhile, Liao Qiyun of China took home the gold medal with a total of 227 kilograms. She lifted 129 and second in snatch and 98 kilograms. With only more than two months remaining before the 2019 Southeast Asian or Sea Games hosted by the Philippines from November 30 to December 11, the country's top three BMX freestyle flatlanders continue to master their tricks and stunts in a bid to win gold. Let's revisit their preparations as Nina Armilio reports. Before, he practiced and polished his stunts just in their backyard in Marikina City. But now, Renz Viaje, the country's top flatlander, can freely play and prepare for the Sea Games Rain or Shine. This, as the Marikina City government granted Renz a roughly 8 by 10 meters wide flatland spot located within the city sports center. According to Yasmin Versosa Viaje, Renz's better half, their request was swiftly approved in just a few minutes. Agad agad, inaksyonan niya yung request namin. Nagpadala siya ng staff niya sa mayor's office, papunta dito sa sports center. Ito naman, since bagong gawa, tapos maganda yung flooring, tamang-tama na raw finish, naka-grinder, ito yung in-offer sa amin. Araw-araw or gabi, 
pwede tayo mag-practice dito. May ilaw, uh, covered court, hindi mainit. So, anytime pwede tayo mag-practice. So, dapat consistent ka mag-practice para sa paghahanda ng si sa, sa darating na SEA Games. Alan Alfaro, the country's top two flatland rider, says it's better that their sport is given more support by allotting facilities such as that in Marikina. For now, he practices in Cabanatuan City, Nueva Ecija, where he produced his own spot, also in his backyard. Oh, sana meron din na uh, parang at least kahit covered man lang. Kahit mainit, maulan, may place kami na malaya na pwedeng mag laro talaga. Kahit malit yung sport natin, kaya natin umangat. Kaya natin makipagsabayan sa Southeast Asia or even Asian countries. On the other hand, Jose Buisan, the Philippines' top three flatlander, shared that he practices only after finishing his shift on his part-time job. In the morning, he rides his bike and works for a food delivery company, and in the afternoons, goes to a park or somewhere with a suitable ground to polish his tricks. Practice lang ng practice. Pero inuuna ko muna yung trabaho kasi nakumupapa ako. Kailangan ko rin tumulong sa mga magulang. Ayun, kaya dito ako sa Manila. Trabaho, after ng bike din. Hindi mahirap maging isang atleta. Maraming paraan para maging, maging magaling ka. As they eye for nothing but victory in the SEA Games, despite limited support, they maximize and capitalize on what they have in a bid to give honor to the Philippines. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue, Marikina City. Pedestrians and cyclists took over streets around the globe on Sunday as miles of typically busy roads were closed to motorists for World Car Free Day. Kath de Maraos reports. Tourists strolling on Paris's Champs Elysee Avenue were thrilled to discover that it was a car free day in the French capital on Sunday, allowing people to wander on the roads around landmarks such as the Eiffel Tower and Arc de Triomphe for the fifth year in a row. All the streets in Paris were scar-free from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. as part of Mayor Anne Hidalgo's fight against air and noise pollution. Only buses, taxis and vehicles for disabled people were authorized to circulate. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a very busy city, so I guess it's quite polluted. Um, so it's quite nice, I think, from time to time to have this sort of off day for the environment. And obviously, it's really good for you as a pedestrian. I actually love it. I'm actually anywhere a bit more of a sustainable person, so I'm, I love the fact that they have electric scooters and a lot of people are cycling. You don't really see that as much in Asia, where we come from, so it's amazing to see that. So I think we were a bit more lucky today to see actually no cars on the road as well, because that just adds to the charm of the place. So yeah, it's beautiful. Joggers, cyclists and pedestrians reign supreme on the Champs-Élysées, which is typically a major east-west thoroughfare for one of Paris's swankiest neighborhoods, running from the Place de la Concorde to the Arc de Triomphe. It's a very good idea, actually. I'm impressed because uh, I can walk from uh, Arc to Louvre. It, we have a plan now to go to Louvre. It's good, very good, very good. Very no good. traffic and uh, um, you know, no cars signaling, no loud noises. You just leisurely stroll Actually, all the like, way to like. Louvre. The Car Free Day is a part of a series of environmentally friendly moves by Socialist Mayor Hidalgo after several episodes of oppressive smog in Paris over the years. Meanwhile, pedestrians and cyclists rule the roads as London joined other major cities around the world for a Car Free Day. More than 27 kilometers of carriageways in the British capital were shut to traffic, including iconic Tower Bridge near the city's financial district. Kat Numaraos, UNTV News and Rescue. Many modes of transportation are effectively used in other countries. Can the Philippines adopt those to finally solve traffic congestion problems? Let's find out what these alternatives are with Kuya Daniel Razon. Ferraris Lamborghinis Maseratis these are some of the famous car manufacturers Italy has become famous for. 
But why do Italians still patronize their mass transport system more than these beautiful and fast cars? Kuya Daniel has an idea why. Let's find out. If you want to go beautiful places in Italy, there is no other way but to ride a high-speed train. The most well-known in Italy is the Italo Treno. This high-speed train can run at a speed of 300 kilometers per hour or 190 miles per hour. Like airplanes, Italo Treno is complete with amenities for a comfortable ride. Italo Treno has clean bathrooms, spacious chairs, and also an overhead baggage compartment. Hungry? No worries. You can buy food and drinks inside the train while traveling. Italo Treno connects major cities in Italy. The first line connects turn to Salermo via Bologna, Florence, Rome, and Naples, while the second line connects Turin to Venice via Milan. So far, uh, yung train nila maganda naman yung doob and uh, convenient to travel, uh, maayos ang comfort room, at nakaupo, hindi nagsisiksisiksikan. So far, kung meron siguro public transport na mga ganyan sa atin, which is sinisimula na sa atin din ngayon, I think malaki magiging tulong yan para sa ating mga computers, uh, especially kung talagang uh, maayos yung loob at hindi talagang uh, laging kurok-kuro. Sana magtuloy-tuloy yung mga ganyan din project sa atin para mas maging uh, maalwan ang uh, paglalakbay ng ating mga kababayan Pilipino. Kuya Daniel also tried the water taxi bus or Vaporetto in Venice, Italy. Hindi naman siguro malayo, baka sakali sa mga darating na hinaharap, maiwan pa natin sa mga anak natin, sa apo natin, na ang ilog pa, sige, maging kagaya nito dito sa Venice. At pagkakitaan ng mga Pilipino. Napakarami natin mga bodies of water, uh, isla, na siguro pwedeng mapakinabangan. Ito ang tubig nila dito. Hindi, makikita mo, hindi mabaho, hindi umaamoy. So, yung mga turista, nagagamit nila. At uh, napagkakakitaan naman ng mga locals dito. Yung mga old buildings na to, na ginawa nilang tourist attraction. At di mo ma wala kang maamoy na foul odor na nanggagaling dun sa, sa water. Okay pa rin. The word Vaporetto is derived from the word little steamer. These are the small boats used in Italy before. Just like a bus, a Vaporetto also has stopovers where commuters can disembark. Naisip ko lang, pwede kayang gawin tong water taxi na to sa Pasig River? Bawat ang hindi, di ba? Water taxi. There are a lot of recommendations in reviving the Pasig River and the provincial operation of the Philippine National Railways or PNR. But until now, it is not yet materialized. Watch the continuation of this vlog on the YouTube channel of Manibela. Monhokson, UNTV News and Rescue. And those are the reasons behind the news this September 23rd, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. It will not dramatically, even slightly, I think, impact on our economy. Meron tayong tinatawag na buffer stock, good for one month. At ito ay nabili nila yan doon sa lumang presyo pa. Bakit ngayon ang timano itataas nila? Initial information that, uh, or report that we received, each deputy speaker, 22 of them, will be receiving 
uh, an alloc an additional allocation of 1.5 billion pesos. So easily that's 33 billion. And each congressman will be given an allocation of 700 million. It's for uh, enhancing our capability sa research, including the Congressional Budget and Planning Office. I will task the city engineering to find out if there is fault. For the meantime, we don't want to accuse anybody. Kung merong fluids na lumalabas dun sa baboy or dugo, any vehicle that will run over uh, the, the fluids or the mud will be now a vector for transmission.